Hi gorgeous, this is episode number 100. And today we have the amazing, amazing Kate Erickson back sharing her wisdom with us. And we will be talking about how to take the time to connect to the people you serve. Hi, this is Kate Erickson and you're listening to the Heart Cells Podcast with Christine Schlonsky. Enjoy. So as you know, today is episode number 100 and I'm so, so excited to have Kate Erickson back on the show. But I also have a very special gift for you that you can pick up at christineschlonsky.com, find the podcast tab, and you have a special edition, the anniversary issue for the first 100 episodes. And what you get with it is not only a beautifully designed cover that we have as our podcast art anyway, but this time you can really download a PDF, a little booklet where we have integrated all the key points of each and every episode. So you can take the wisdom and go through 100 episodes and really see where would you love to tune in? Where is something you would like to review? What were the episodes called? What can you learn from them? What can you learn from all these amazing guests? So hop on over to christineschlonsky.com and check out that special, special gift that we just created for you. So you have all the knowledge at your fingertips. It's at christineschlonsky.com. Find the podcast tab and there it is right there for you. So let's tune in with a wonderful Kate Erickson. She is the integrator at Entrepreneurs on Fire. If you have not heard yet of that amazing podcast that has over 1.3 million listeners a month, it is an award-winning podcast where John Lee Dumas interviews inspiring entrepreneurs who are truly on fire. Kate herself has also a podcast called Kate's Take, which delivers amazing, amazing value. I love her podcast very, very much. And if you have the time, make definitely sure you check that out because the advice she is giving in her podcast is amazing. Kate is also the co-author of the podcast journal Idea to Launch in 50 Days, which I, by the way, used to launch Heart Cells podcast. So I highly recommend that. So let's dive right in into the wisdom with Kate Erickson. I am so excited to have you back on the show, Kate. Welcome. Thank you so much, Christine. Happy to be back. Yes, I loved our first interview, um, seeing your entrepreneurial journey and, you know, the challenges. And I know that so many people are in the same place. So getting that inspiration of someone who has dealt with so many challenges and, you know, is running a successful business now, traveling the world and what, what's even more important, like serving so many people all over the globe. That's such a beautiful story. So do you remember the very first thing you've ever sold? So the very first thing I ever sold was either lemonade at a lemonade stand on the street that my sister and I probably finagled together. Um, or it would have been like selling candy bars for the sports teams that I played for. I don't remember which one came first, maybe the lemonade. <laughs> and so do, do you know how, how it felt? Did you just, was it just an adventure or was it just something all the kids in the neighborhood did? Like, how did it feel? Yeah. Yeah, I felt like the lemonade stand was definitely just one of those things that my parents probably were like, hey, you guys should do this. And, and, or maybe we had asked, like, how do we get more allowance? And they probably said, your allowance is this and that's it. And so we were just <laughs> looking for other ways to collect some extra change. Um, but I, I mean, I rem from what I remember, I remember having fun. But, um, you know, I definitely also remember. Uh, kind of having like an awkward feeling about like if people would come by and they didn't buy, then, you know, why didn't like, why didn't they want to buy a lemonade or, you know, like selling candy? Oh my gosh. With, with selling the candy bars, I was probably my best client. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would have been my best too, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely do remember kind of like that uncomfortable feeling of if somebody comes and they ask about it, but then they don't buy, like that just made me feel very awkward. Um, and, and I, yeah, that's, that's, I guess what I remember in terms of like how I felt about it. But I mean, it felt so cool when people bought it and they like would take a sip or take a bite of the candy bar and they'd enjoy it and they'd say, thank you so much. And, you know, they were so appreciative, like, oh, this is so cool that like I helped this person have this experience. Um, so yeah, that's what I remember. Oh, that's wonderful. And do you also remember how it felt like for you to take the money to have that exchange? Yeah, well, it made me feel like I was doing a good job, um, you know, like in terms of especially with the candy bars, like that being more of like a fundraiser type of um, situation where, um, you know, at the lemonade stand, I was taking the money and putting it into my own pocket. And and that was cool because I to me, I was, you know, that was just money in my pocket. Um, I, I think I probably felt like a little more comfortable with the fundraiser situation because I felt like I was taking money for a greater cause other than just putting it in my own pocket. Um, yeah, it's so interesting to think of like the psychology behind it when you like dive into what those feelings were or like how you viewed it back then as such like a young child, you know, I'm talking like, I probably was five or six when I did the lemonade stand, yeah. um, maybe more like, you know, 10 or 11, 12 when I did the candy bar. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely felt good about like contributing to, you know, our team and, and being able to use that money for like tournaments that we were in or our uniforms or something like that. You know, I, I could see like the direct result of, of what that work was doing. Yeah, that, yeah, it's so interesting because I see in people like when they sell for somebody else or when it's for a good cause, usually it's it's easier for them mm -hmm. than when they ask for that when they feel like they are just asking for money for their own pocket, which is most of the time never the case because they they are heart centered, they're supportive, they want to do something mm -hmm. good with the money, but seeing that in a different light always helps to to shift that mindset and to know mm -hmm. like now I'm having a company I'm serving people so definitely I need to ask for money so I have that energy exchange for my products and services so that you know I cannot only just put food on the table but you know I can pay for my dreams and I can find good causes that I want to support absolutely um, what do you do to to make sure that you yourself you are grounded and you are like in harmony with the business and the the lifestyle so that you can keep that pace because you're a pretty fast pace yeah um, that you can keep that up and always be ahead of the curve you know one of the biggest things for me is um and I know for John too we're really big about continuing to do things that don't scale, regardless of how big our business grows or how big our revenues grow or how many trips we go on or, you know, how many experiences we invest in. Um, we always take time to connect with the people that we serve, um, whether it be at events, um, in person, just yesterday, we hosted two couples at our home here in Puerto Rico for dinner who, you know, reached out to us and said that they were visiting the island and wondering if we were free, um, jumping on one-on-one -on -one calls, answering every single email that comes into our inbox. I really feel like that helps me, that helps remind me what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, because, you know, getting to sit across the table from somebody and share a meal or, getting to jump on the phone like this or Christine, even the day that we spent together in Berlin, it's like, that's those connections, those relationships, seeing other people build their dreams because they're stepping out and creating businesses as a result of, you know, inspiration from the entrepreneurs on fire podcast or the content that we create. Um, it just helps keep us grounded in what we're doing and it's great motivation to continue doing what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys are doing such a fantastic job. But still, you know, you travel a lot and there's a lot to organize. So is there anything that you do like maybe on a daily or on a weekly basis to, 
to make sure you do also like good self care and it's it's not you know serving like 24 <laughs> 7. Definitely. Um, my morning routine is all about me. Um, so it's very selfish. <laughs> and uh, so everything that I do probably for the first two hours of my day is, you know, very centered on my health and wellness, um, whether it's going for a run, a walk, doing yoga, working out. Um, a lot of the times, like I'll have a weekly you know, coffee catch up with friends here in the community or even if it's online. Um, and so those things, you know, just taking care of the house, doing things, you know, around here that help us feel comfortable in our environment. Um, those are really like, that's really how I start my day um, with that space and the ability to know that I'm filling myself up in the morning so that I have like that energy and, and that the desire really to, you know, have those, um, you know, great energy spurts to go full on in the business and, um, you know, really show up for our community. Yeah. Wonderful. So do you, do you have such things that we call like bad days? <laughs> Does it exist with all the sunshine? <laughs> yeah, gosh, we're very lucky for our weather, that's for sure. <laughs> um, you know, I've definitely, over the past couple of years, read a lot of amazing books and been surrounded with a lot of really incredible people that have really helped me um, shift my mindset um, and my outlook around, you know, quote unquote, bad days. Um, and you know, it might sound kind of fluffy, but um, I'm honestly so grateful for everything that we have, where we are, our family, our friends, the relationships that we have, um, the business that we're running, the lives that we're impacting. Um, of course, I, I run into situations or, you know, have things happen where I'm, you know, maybe down and out or like feeling bummed out. But um, I'm usually pretty good about recognizing that like quite quickly and being able to flip that script um, because I really do believe so much of that is it's, you know, it's mindset. Like we get to choose um, how we move on from any situation or circumstance. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. And what I found really wonderful, how you just laid it out. Like I'm so grateful because when we're grateful, there's no space for other emotions. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. So tuning into gratefulness um, and, and being in that place, well, there's actually no way that you can feel bad. <laughs> so yeah. I, I love that. You do it like on, on autopilot. <laughs> you, didn't even, I, you didn't even think about it. Like, huh, bad day, bad day, bad day. What's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and, and that is actually part of my morning routine as well, is just taking time out for gratitude. Uh -huh. um, you know, we have... The, the smallest things that we can be grateful for. And, and so often we either take for granted or we just don't give ourselves the time and the space to recognize like how amazing it is that, you know, I get to watch the sunrise over the Caribbean or like, you know, I get to, I have a walking path that is like a really amazing walking path that I get to go on every day. Like, you know, some people don't have those things. Yeah. Yeah. Being grateful just for, you know, little things, uh, I think helps always to shift um, into a better mindset and wh whatever, you know, just taking it step by step, we can deal with the challenges that are coming up. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. So just one last question, because again, time just flies. Do you have like an inspirational quote or your favorite mantra you can share? Oh, yes. So um, one of my favorites is Albert Einstein um, when he said, try not to become a man of success, but rather I say person, try not to become a person of success, but rather a person of value. Um, that has been a great reminder for me um, that I, you know, turn to daily, weekly, every other day, you know, I turn to it very often. I think it's an amazing reminder for those of us who are creating um, content who are serving other people to remember that it's about the value that we have to provide. Um, and if we lead with that, then, you know, other amazing things can happen. 
Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So I really want that people connect with you and all the amazing things you are offering. Uh, where do people go? eofire.com. Wonderful. And obviously, I will have like all the connections in the show notes as well and all the links so people can tune in Instagram, Facebook, your website, like everywhere. And obviously, if they do not listen to EO Fire, to send them that way as well. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Christine. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. You too. Well, time passes fast and I loved the interview with Kate and just the wisdom she shared from looking back at such a career such as failure really going up to amazing success with the podcast Entrepreneurs on Fire, joining John Lee Dumas in the team and look what the guys created. So I'm really, really inspired by them and I'm really happy that Kate had given Heart Cells podcast the opportunity to be episode number 100. And for you, we have created a wonderful, wonderful gift, the anniversary issue. You can hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, find the podcast tab, and you can just download it. It does not just look amazing with all the guests on the cover, but it also contains all the podcast episodes with the three key points. So when you are looking for a topic that you need some inspiration on or that you want to re-listen and you forgot the name of the guest who shared that amazing wisdom, it's all right there at your fingertips. And uh, yeah, basically it's like a tool where you get the three key points, the name and number of the episode so you can tune in really, really quickly. And I'm just so excited to share this wonderful tool with you as a gift of Heart Cells podcast for episode number 100. Make sure you hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, find the podcast tab and connect with Kate. I have available for you all the keynotes, the show notes, the transcript, as well as all the links to connect with Kate and to tune into EO Fire with all the amazing wisdom these guys are sharing. So thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for listening, for being a listener. If you love what you hear, make sure you share it with your friends and make sure you subscribe. But another thing I would love to invite you to again is to just reach out via email. Send me an email to info at christineschlonsky.com and just share what have you learned from the podcast? What inspires you? What do you love? And what topics are you looking for that I could be teaching on or inviting a guest on so that you can learn and be supported on your journey to sell from your heart, to be authentic in the sales process and to really, really create a business and lifestyle you just love. So thank you so, so much for tuning in. This was episode number 100. And I'm looking forward to present to you episode number 101 with also a very amazing guest. And I'm looking forward to that. And for now, I'm just saying bye to wherever you are in this beautiful world. Bye for now. Bye.